If you've been anywhere for the past six months, you are probably aware that a war has been raging across YouTube. I wanted to make this video earlier, I just haven't had the time, and now the end is here. T-Series are regularly taking over PewDiePie now with more and more subscribers every day, and on the 27th of March 2019, T-Series officially became the number one channel, in line with YouTube's 24-hour rule. Nevertheless, I wanted to talk about the bigger problem with the nine-year-old army's approach to the race to 100 mil. The battle to become the number one YouTuber has been going on since roughly August of last year, when T-Series were rapidly rising through the ranks. The reason for this is not because they provide amazing new content, but they have been uploading Bollywood film trailers and music to their channel for years. Um, this stuff's very popular in India, and India has a population of nearly one and a half billion people. But yet for a long time, they've had one of the lowest online presences in the world. But in recent years, as Blue Shirt Kid explained, there have been initiatives, uh, including one funded by Google, that have allowed India to get online. And as of right now, there are five Hindi channels in the top 50 most subscribed list, and they're all rising faster than the rest. India getting online is not a bad thing by any stretch of the imagination. With a population that size suddenly having access, it's bound to affect all platforms in some way or another. Um, but also, a large portion of the population speak Hinglish. Um, so that likely means that a whole range of new content creators for this huge new audience are going to come about in the next couple of years. But they're also going to be somewhat accessible to the English-speaking world. None of the Indian channels currently in the top 50 are actually creators, or at least independent creators. They're all big companies. Of course, Plenty of people have tried to turn this battle into a declaration for a superior race, and this has happened on both sides. Um, as PewDiePie is a Swedish man living in England with his Italian fiancée and two dogs with Chinese heritage, he must be having the biggest identity crisis since Mario. But nevertheless, some of his fans have still done some highly questionable and racist things. Meanwhile though, the CEO of T-Series used his Twitter account to promote the idea that this race was about making India proud. Now, on the surface, I'd first of all like to say that at its most innocent, this is just immediately obvious that it's a corporate tactic. Promoting nationalism is one of the oldest forms of propaganda because it makes you part of a homogenous group. But promoting nationalism is dangerous, especially when rising nationalism in India is seriously becoming dangerous. I'm not trying to blame T-Series for any of the violence that is going on in India right now, but I just wanted to demonstrate how the narrative for this can be flipped in any direction, depending on who's telling the story. And this is the part where I link back to the title and tell you about where PewDiePie fans are going wrong. Now, if you truly believe this is India versus the world, you're just wrong, um, but the internet is very much under attack right now, as you may be aware. Article 13 was just passed in the EU, and once this gets brought to full effect, it's going to change the way thousands of creators work. In a way, in fact, many ways, Article 13 helps those big money-hungry corporations right at the top, staying right at the top. They have the resources to produce unlimited amounts of content, or rather, have other people create the content and then hold all the licensing and distribution for that content. But, of course, big companies want to limit any copyright infringement as much as possible, even if that means that the little guy making a living off of copyrighted content gets stomped on. The main problem here is that freedom of the internet is being voted on by people that don't really understand the internet anyway. Though that's an entirely different subject, but 13 people did make the wrong vote by accident, by the way. So, with so many corporations dominating the YouTube platform, that means you should be supporting small creators. So yeah, don't subscribe to PewDiePie. But calm down, breathe a second, because actually, yeah, do subscribe to PewDiePie, because the problem is that people are putting too much effort into creating alt accounts, which generally end up being removed in audits eventually anyway. So subscribe to PewDiePie, but after you've subscribed to PewDiePie, 
you should be focusing that energy on finding smaller creators and supporting them any way you can. This probably seems biased coming from such a small creator like myself, and yes, if you like the video, then sure, smash those like and subscribe buttons, but, but this video isn't about me simply because I don't depend on YouTube for a living. Those that do, though, are now up against the adpocalypse, the meme ban, and the corporate invasion. Wow, these are going to be some great stories for the grandkids. The only real way for YouTube to return to its more lenient form of monetization would be for a competitor to appear on the scene. And whilst Dailymotion and Vimeo and others have been around for some time, in order for those sites to have an infrastructure like Google's, they need a bigger user base that makes them money. But their user base isn't as large because they don't have that infrastructure. The closest competitors over the year have been Vine, Twitch and more recently Musical.ly and TikTok, though all of those sites benefit from their content being additionally shared on YouTube anyway. Maybe it's time for creators to move to a separate video site, but it's just not realistic. A second option for this change in YouTube would be to split up their actual website so that there was a clear distinction between corporately and independently produced content. But not only would this make the website more difficult to navigate, but big corporations also have the resources to keep you watching their videos, so it could just marginalise content creators even more. Just a quick note, after I'd actually recorded this video I found a great video by a creator called Avdan, uh, I'll put a card up there, but that shows completely how this sort of system might work within YouTube, um, and how it actually pushes creators uh, to the top in, in different ways. So check that out and yeah. So really the only option is to put it in the hands of the audience. The algorithm at this point in time is disproportionately biased towards what's deemed user and advertiser friendly content, but user interaction is still a massive part of it. The only way to change that is to change the way you navigate through YouTube. If you see a smallish view count on YouTube, just check it out. If you think the content is good, but maybe it's not your cup of tea, why not just drop it a like anyway? It was obvious from the earliest days of the internet that big money hungry companies would exploit every avenue. But I would hate one day to fire up YouTube and see nothing but TV show hosts, music videos and movie trailers, knowing that there's little chance of an independent creator being able to find success on the site. So, make sure you subscribe to PewDiePie, like this video if you think it's time for a revolution. God damn, need a revolution. Internet wisely, and bye. Thank you for fuck's sake. It's disgusting. What is that? What am I looking at?